and is shocked to see Jude before him. Incidentally, the lab saw Ethan's vitals dropping and expected he was having a response to harm. Thus, they immediately send Jude to the future with the fix to save him. In a little while, Ethan and Jude find that his skeleton stays there, and that implies his destiny hasn't changed. They then use Archie to track down another entryway. Some gadget checks Ethan's eye and awards them access. At the point when they go in, a screen invites him. It asks him for a DNA test. At the point when he acknowledges it, his wrist gadget starts to work, making him drain. At the blood test, it practices environmental awareness. The lights to the room turn on and they understand that they are in Chronicorp's lab. After 407 years, the time machine is before them as well. Jude gets invigorated on the grounds that now they possess the ability to return to the past. Yet Ethan doesn't think in this way, saying they haven't transformed anything, and he will wind up dying, very much like the dead Ethan. Ethan checks the framework log and finds a holographic recording made by his dad, who makes sense of that the time machine was initially intended to gather the oxygen, information later on planet, and afterward send it back to the past. Notwithstanding, when his dad initially began the time machine, he got a message requesting that he send his child to what's in store. Notwithstanding his qualms, he decided to do so, and made a DNA check here for Ethan. Before long, Ethan and Jude understand that the time machine will not have the option to take them back, on the grounds that its battery has nearly drained following 407 years. What's more terrible is that the enactment of the lab sets off a glitch in its atomic power center, taking steps to release an atomic blast in only four hours. This implies they need to figure out how to fix the time machine and travel back before the blast. Using up all available time, they need to rapidly act. Outside, they are shocked to find a demolished city covered with green plants, however possessed without any people, showing that Earth begins to recuperate itself after human eradication. Human skeletons are dispersed all over. Ethan gets to his significant other's home, just to find her bones, making him fall into despair. Jude attempts to convince him to return to the past, as the fix against the disorder doesn't appear to exist even later on world. Be that as it may, Jude's words make Ethan dubious. Yet again he then, at that point, turns on the corroded Archie to play the recording, from which he perceives Jude's voice, and it appears Jude is the very one who shot him. Jude raises his weapon at Ethan, emphatically rejecting that he would shoot Ethan. Ethan at last chooses to finish the mission first, so, with joint endeavors, they figure out how to fix the power center and afterward return to the lab. Presently the narrative framework works and they ought to have the option to get back to the past. They simply need to stand by 37 minutes till Gateway sent off. When the commencement arrives at nothing, the entry will tie to 2067 for roughly 30 seconds. In any case, Ethan actually finds his body stays behind an entryway at a similar area, which suggests that they haven't rolled out any improvements to what's in store. To sort out reality, Ethan takes out the battery of his ongoing Archie and puts it onto the corroded one. And like that, he gains admittance to another video in which Ethan is guaranteed that his future self will be killed by Jude. Jude then admits that there is no desire for evolving the future and he is attempting to safeguard Ethan. Finding it hard to accept, Ethan secures his sibling in a room, then, at that point, plays back his dad's holographic log from the day he passed on. He before long finds a discussion between the Chronicorp's CTO, Regent Jackson, and his dad. It's shown that Ethan's dad needed to utilize the time machine to save all humankind by tracking down the fix. However, the CTO simply expected to utilize the machine to escape from the perishing time with some pick not many. Nonetheless, whichever plan they pick, somebody should go into the future and turn on the time machine. To securely send living matter through time, it requires a functional connection from the two sides, to stop the CTO with her arrangement his dad, locks the time machine, and sets Ethan's DNA as the confirmation key. Out of frustration at what Ethan's father recently did, the CTO killed him right away. She then arranges Jude to kill Ethan's mom and be a watchman to him, so one day they can utilize Ethan's wristband to gain admittance to what's to come. Ethan is past shocked. The man he considered his sibling, ended up being the person who killed his mom and is going to kill him as well. He likewise understands that he has misconstrued his dad, who didn't intentionally leave the family. Realizing that Regina needs to carry a picked not many into the future, Ethan attempts to close the time machine down, yet Jude hurries to stop Ethan and uncovers that he is entrusted here by the CTO to guarantee that Ethan is sent so as to fix the power disappointment. When Ethan actuates the time machine, he ought to kill Ethan. Nonetheless, Jude has framed close profound relations with Ethan throughout the long term. Seeing his sibling-like companion in that state as a result of him, 
he is culpability ridden. In this way, all things being equal of shooting Ethan, he shoots himself dead. In fury and lament, not entirely settled to satisfy his dad's final request, which is to track down the fix and save the perishing people. He investigates the screen and finds the absolute first message composed by his dad. He finds that the message, send Ethan White, was sent without anyone else. Subsequently, he codes in the message once more and sends it into the past, alongside numerous different things. In the meantime, in the lab of the year 2067, the CTO of the gathering of favored picked individuals are standing by restlessly for the time machine to be enacted. To their shock, be that as it may, the time machine sends back many terminated plants alongside a duplicate of the recorded homicide of Ethan's dad. Before long, the time machine is obliterated by Ethan, bringing about the breakdown of the CTO's arrangement. Eventually, the CTO is captured because of the homicide. The plants sent back to 2067 are developed to revive the planet. Ethan's significant other likewise gets a rose sent from him and grasps his decision. While Ethan needs to remain later on world alone, he covers Jude and pardons him. A butterfly grabs his eye and leads him again to a similar entry, where Ethan is glad to see that the body of his future self is gone. He surges to investigate the world outside and feels far better to see a cutting-edge eco-accommodating city, rather than the abandoned one from before. His choice had changed the eventual fate of humankind. The reason of the film is set in 2067. When the world has been annihilated past recovery, due to environmental change, all vegetation has been terminated. With the absence of vegetation, the sum of oxygen in the air has diminished dramatically. Individuals need to purchase counterfeit oxygen to make do. The vast majority of the world has gone dim. Individuals choke to death. In such circumstances, just a single city in Australia has made do. And it is all because of an organization called the Chronicorp enterprise that makes engineered oxygen. Notwithstanding, counterfeit oxygen causes a lethal illness, brought the infections after some time. Mankind has only a brief time before it goes completely wiped out. Ethan White is an inhabitant of the Australian city. He and his companion Jude function as mechanics in the Chronicor partnership. The enterprise is likewise working, constantly to track down a solution for the disorders and a method for saving the world. Ethan's better half, Xanthi, additionally has the ailment. Ethan really buckles down constantly to procure and get her better oxygen. At some point as Ethan and Jude work in the passage, the Chronicorp's CTO of Molecule Research, Regina Jackson, calls them to her office. There, she acquaints herself with the two and lets them know that mankind will kick the bucket in a couple of years on the off chance that the circumstances don't change. She then, at that point, uncovers that Ethan is the one in particular who can help everybody and save mankind. Ethan is befuddled and doesn't trust her. Yet, Regina demands he visit their lab. The lab has immense hardware. The lab specialist named Billy Mitchell acquaints himself with Ethan and checks out at Ethan's wrist gadget briefly. They then make sense of for him that Ethan's dad, Doc Richard White, began this task quite a while back. The machine that stands before them is a time machine called the Narrative. In the very first examination finished with the machine, they needed to send radio waves into it to check what was on the opposite side. They figured out through it that 407 years after the fact, in 2474, the Earth would have sufficient vegetation to keep up with sufficient oxygen in the air and support human existence. Individuals come to trust that assuming mankind actually exists a few hundred years after the fact, all things considered, they have found answers for every one of the issues tormenting their world. Nonetheless, an odd action bewildered the researchers there. The waves they sent had returned transformed. At the point when they decoded it, they figured out that somebody from what was to come had sent them the message saying, send Ethan White. So presently Regina and the entire group need to send Ethan into the future for him to bring back the fix. Ethan is past amazed. He doesn't trust them and thinks that Regina is simply feigning. Also, he would rather not leave his wiped-out spouse and go into what's in store. Along these lines, he declines to help. Later, Ethan and Jude are at a coffee shop, where they purchase fresh oxygen. Jude attempts to convince Ethan to proceed with the arrangement and assist with saving mankind. Nonetheless, Ethan chuckles at him, saying that he doesn't have any desire to resemble his dad. Ethan abhors his dad for never being there for him. A long time back, his dad ventured out from home and disappeared, while his mom was killed when he was a youngster. From that point forward, he has been raised by Jude, a 
a man who Ethan views as his more seasoned sibling, as well as the closest companion. He faults him for passing on his mom to complete the venture, and doesn't have any desire to continue in his way and leave his wiped out spouse. Nonetheless, Jude figures out how to convince him, saying that the main way he can save his significant other is by tracking down a fix. Ethan thinks back of his eighth birthday celebration when his dad has gotten him an odd box as a present. As he puts his hands inside the case, a gadget hooks onto his wrist, making him drain. Richard had set a extremely durable hand gadget on his child. It has been numerous years, however, Ethan doesn't have the foggiest idea about its utilization yet. Later at home, Ethan tells Xanthi all that occurred during the day, and she also demands him to go. The next morning, Ethan recorders, I will track down my direction back to you on a metal blossom, and leaves it close to Xanthi. He then, at that point, goes to Regina's office once more and tells her that if he can find just a single fix, they should give it first to Xanthi. Regina acknowledges and takes him to the lab once more. Darmichel shows him the suit that he needs to wear prior to getting into the machine. As they clear up the mission for him, Ethan understands that they don't have an arrangement. They do not know what he will see or who he will meet at the opposite end. Notwithstanding, after they put him in the suit, they give him a computer-based intelligence gadget called the Archie. Archie will show the lab Ethan's vitals consistently. It will likewise assist with exploring his area. Then, they at last toss him into the machine. Inside, Ethan moves at rapid through time. He falls from the sky and grounds in an obscure wilderness. The contact from the air makes his suit get fire, so he rapidly receives in return. Then, he glances around and is dumbfounded by the excellence of nature. He finds that the world has totally changed. The trees and the normal oxygen are back. He strolls toward the path Archie guides him and sees a dugout entryway of the like. In any case, what gets his eyes is a skeleton that falsehoods directly before the entryway. Its skull has a projectile opening in it. Besides, he takes a gander at the ID on seeing his own name and is shocked. The skeleton is Ethan's. Ethan additionally tracks down the skeleton's Archie and plays the keep going recording on it. He hears a man say that this is the main way, and shoots Ethan. All of a sudden, the gadget's power goes off. He is stunned, accepting that this is the destiny that looks for him. Then, at that point, he sees the skeleton's wrist gadget. It is indistinguishable from Ethan's, with the exception of the light gleams green in the skeleton's gadget. Yet Ethan's has been read his entire life. That evening, he eats a fire going and eats wild berries. Incidentally, the berries were toxic. Ethan heaves and begins to go oblivious. Ethan awakens sooner or later, 